amora na tasirika sasa ingine pikia mungu tu makofi ya pia mungu wa sana amen yes well greetings everyone amen I'm happy to be here na furaha kuwa pamoja nani siku ya leo I'll put this away. Don't want to knock it off. Big <laughs> like bad. I'm going to go to the house. In 
James chapter 4, verse 7. I think it's 7. No, no, no. Uh, 17. 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You like to have pretend that mema, now why do you have to have mema, pocket it down? So we have James 4, 17. And then we have James 3, 10. In the one case, if you do wrong, you've broken the law. And in the other case, if you don't do right, you break the law. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. That's because of the law. All people are born under the law. Tunaona kwamba kila mwanadamu amezaliwa chini ya sheria. In the Old Testament you had Jew and Gentile. Tunaona kwamba katika kitabu Agano na Kale tulikuwa na Wayahudi na watu wa mataifa. The Gentiles started first. Tunaona kwamba wale watu wa mataifa walianza kwanza. And they lived uh, for 2500 years until Abraham. Na tunaona kwamba waliishi miaka 1025 kabla ya Abraham. So there was only Gentiles up to this time of Abraham. Kwa hivyo tunaona kwamba walikuepo uh, wakati wa Abraham. And though there was not a written law, na hakukuwa na sheria iliyokuwa nakiliwa, there was a law written in their hearts. Na kulikuwa na sheria tu ilikuwa imenakiliwa ndani ya mioyo yao. And according to James 4:17 and James 2:10, na hiyo mistari ambayo ameandika pale they were sinners. The only way in the Old Testament to get your sins covered was with the blood of an animal. Well, you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And eventually the Jews ended up in slavery in the, in the land of Egypt. And what did Moses, the, the, their deliverer, want to do? He wanted to go out into the wilderness and sacrifice to his God. He needed a covering. The nation of Israel needed a covering for their sin. Tunaona taifa la Israeli lilikuwa lilikuwa linahitaji kitu cha kufunika hiyo hizo dhambi. Eventually the Jews uh, get delivered and they end up in the wilderness. Baadaye Wayahudi walikuja wakakombolewa na wakaendelea katika jangwa. And God gives them the law of Moses to the Jews. Na tunaona kwamba Mungu akapeana sheria ya Wayahudi the Gentiles, they just keep going down their merry way. But, event, but unfortunately, their religion became perverted. They were worshipping Baal. Molech. All kinds of false gods. So God says, I'm going to start with the Jew, I'm going to give him my own law, written down. And in that law, God codified how he wanted his sacrifices to be made. Now those those sacrifices given to Moses, the tabernacle and the offerings. They had to do them year after year after year. What does it say about those offerings? They weren't good enough to save. They could cover your sin. But they couldn't cleanse it. That's why Jesus Christ had to come. The Bible says, in whom we have redemption, his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So we have the law on this side. All I can do is make you a sinner. Where do sinners go? They 
The good news of the gospel is that the Lord Jesus Christ provided the sacrifice for us and provided his blood. Now let me show you on this side, it's called grace. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. The Bible talks about salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ being a gift. We go to Romans chapter 5, we would see it over and over again. It's a gift, it's a gift. Warumi katika mlango wa 5 ina ina kirudia ina kirudia kusema kwamba ni kipawa ni kipawa ni kipawa. In the Old Testament, agano la kare, you had a promise. Tulikuwa na ahadi that Jesus Christ, kwamba Yesu Kristo was going to come and die for a sin. Alikuwa anakuja ili afu kwa jiri ya damizeti. Now most of the people in the Old Testament didn't understand that. Now when they went to the temple day in and day out with their sons. Now when they just because they didn't know the promise was there. Lakini kisa na maana kwa sababu hawakujua ahadi ile iliyopo ilikuwapo pale doesn't mean that it didn't exist. Ah ai ai kwa Jesus writes in the book, I mean, excuse me, John writes in the book of Revelation in chapter 13. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Now the him there is a reference to the Antichrist. During the tribulation, the reason I know that is because the next part of the verse says, whose names are not written in the book of life. Of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So in God's foreknowledge, even before the creation of man, na mungu akijua hayo mbere, the plan was in uh, was put forth. Mipango iliweka mbere. That even though man was a sinner, na ijapo kuwa mungu alikuwa ni mnyadami, Christ would die for sinners. Uyu aya Yesu Kristo amekufa kwa ajili ya wanyadamu. Christ would die for sinners because of God's grace. Na tunaona kwamba Kristo amekufa kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu kwa sababu ya neema ya Mungu. These folks go to na inapoendelea hivyo inaenda kwa heaven. Mbinguni. Grace is getting something you do not deserve. Tunaona kwamba neema maana yake ni kwamba unapata kitu ambacho hukustahili kukipata. Cannot earn your way to heaven. Yeah. You have to be given a ticket. Yeah. And the ticket is Jesus Christ. Grace can only make you a saint. Now, kwamba nehema ya Mungu itakufanya kuwa mtakatifu. Under Jesus Christ is the provision. Let me give you some examples of the difference between law and grace. The law is what you you do. The law is what 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 you do. Even if you got an A plus 
you still wouldn't get the help. Hata ukipata ile grade ya A kuongeza hautaingia mbinguni because you get a 99% you can plus. Bengine utapata 99.99 bado hutaenda mbinguni. It only takes one sin to make you a sinner and all sinners are. Na tunaona kwamba itakuchukua dhambi kidogo moja tu na kutokuweza kupeleka mbinguni. So the law is what you do. Sheria ni kile unafanya. Grace is what Christ did. Naona kwamba neema nayo ni ni kitu ambacho Kristo wetu alifanya. For those that have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, wale ambao wamempokea Kristo kama bwana na mkozo wa maisha yao, you're on this side. Wewe uko upande ule mwingine, bwana asifiwe sana. You can never go on back to the other side. Wewe unaja tena nyuma au upande huu mwingine. Jesus talks about you must be born again. Yesu Kristo mwenyewe anazungumzia kuhusu kitu kinaitwa lazima uzaliwe mara ya pili. That's exactly what happens. Na hiyo ndio inatendeka hakika upande wa upande mwingine wa ubinguni. So I talk about being born again, not a corrupt seed, but a bit corrupt by the word of God. Biblia inasema wale ambao wanazaliwa upya si kwa zile ile mbegu ambayo imeharibikwa, lakini ni mbegu ambayo iko hai ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. On this side is the Old Testament. Na upande huu ni agano la kale. On this side is the New Testament. Upande ule mwingine ni agano jipya. In this side you're sunk. Ah, upande hii wewe umezama. On this side you're saved. Na upande huo umeokolewa. Bwana asifiwe sana. On this side you're a fugitive. Na fugitive like a criminal. Ah, upande hii wewe ni jambazi, mtu ambaye anastahili kupata hukumu. On this side you are forgiven. Na upande hii wewe umesamehewa. On this side you're never good enough. Na upande hii wewe si mtu mwema hata kidogo. Did you hear what I just said? Umesikia vipi vile ninavyosema? To those you that maybe want to live under the law. Na wale ambao mnaona kama kuishi katika sheria, you're never good enough. Ha, wewe si mwema wa kutosha. Now do you understand what Jesus said that your righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees to enter into heaven? Ndio unaona kwamba wema wetu hata tukifanya nini hatuwezi haiwezi kutufumulia njia kwenda mbinguni ndio upande hii. You could be the greatest Pharisee, greatest religious person on earth. Bengine wewe ni farisayo wa farisayo ambaye ni mkuu sana katika dunia na pengine basi utakuwa unakufa ndani ya dhambi zako kwenda jehana because you're trusting in what you do pengine unaamini kile ambacho unafanya not what Christ did pengine sio Kristo kila alifanya on this side you're not accepted pande hii hawezi kubarika on this side you are accepted pande ile wewe unakubarika on this side on this side you're as good as tell and it's good you're dead and screwed And, and like you're in hell. Yeah. Hapa wewe umekufa na mahali wewe unaenda unaenda kuzini. In this side you're alive, you're quickened. Na hapa wewe umeuishwa na wewe unaishi. On this side you're stuck with Moses. Hapa wewe umeshikamana na Musa. Who got so mad he struck the rock. Ambapo yeye alikuwa amekasirika mpaka akafika jiwe kwenye jiwe. Listen to me. Hebu nisikize vizuri. Moses did not get to go into the promise of Musa hakuenda hakuingia ile inchi ambayo ilikuwa ya ahadi. But guess who gets to go into the promised land? Na afu alikuwa ameahidiwa inchi nzuri. We do. Hata sisi pia. Because we have Jesus. Na sisi tumeahidiwa na tunaingia kwa sababu tuna tunaye Yesu. On this side the Bible talks about you being under a curse. Na upande huu wewe uko chini ya laana. On this side, you are under grace. Na upande hii, wewe uko chini ya neema. You're given a free gift. Wewe umepewa umepewa the the up ya ya bure. Let me uh, give you an illustration of this. Uh, some of you may understand. Your young people, old people may understand. Wacha ni wape tu mfano kidogo ili wale vijana na wale watu wazima mnaweza kuelewa kidogo. Remember I said everybody's born under the law. Unakumbuka vile nilisema kwamba kila mmoja wetu amezaliwa chini ya pongo la la sheria. There's been no exception for 6000 years. Ah, kuna hakuna uduru 
kwa katika muda uliopita wa miaka 1600. You're in either under the law of Moses or under the law of the Gentiles, the law written in your heart. Pengine wewe uko katika sheria ya Musa ama sheria ya watu wa mataifa ambayo ilianikwa ndani ya mioyo yetu. But the Lord he looks down and says, you know, I would like those those folks to be in heaven. Na tunaweza kuona kwamba Mungu akiwa uko juu anatazama chini na anaangalia anasema wale watu wanahitaji kuwa katika mbingu yangu. So he comes he comes down to earth, he dies on Calvary, he's buried the third day rose. Right he says, if you will receive me, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, I will give you eternal life. Now you ladies, you get a wedding ring, right? Usually you get a wedding ring when you get married. Na tunaona kwamba nyinyi wanawake wakati ambapo mnafunga ndoa, mnavaa pete. And that's very important to the lady. Na hiyo ni hicho ni kitu muhimu sana kwa wanawake. Because up until the marriage, up until the time you get wedded and get married, na ukiendelea hadi siku ambayo utaenda kuwa unaolewa, the man says, I love you, I love you, I love you. There's a promise. I love you. I love you. And in fact, if if you love me, I will uh, marry you, and you can be my bride. Okay, kwa kweli ni ukinipenda mimi mtaolewa nawe nawe utakuwa wangu. I'll just put a, a wedding ring up here. Na mimi mtaweka pale hiyo pete. Now he can say he loves you all he wants. Na anaweza kusema mara nyingi iwezekanavyo kwamba anakupenda. But ladies, he says I love you, I love you, I love you. Ah wanawake ni hivyo kweli anasema nakupenda, nakupenda, nakupenda. But until he gives you that ring. Na kabla hajakupa hiyo eh pete, until he gives you that ring. Ah kabla hajakupa hiyo pete, you may kind of not so sure. Pengine wewe hauko kamili, hauko haujajua kweli. Right? Ni kweli. Hey ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Until you say to stand here, you walk down the aisle and you get married and you just kind of have your you know, just a little bit of doubt. Yeah, wewe unaweza kwenda na ukaanza kufikiria lakini unakuwa na kitu ndani yako cha shaka. There is a promise. Kuna ahadi. But the Bible says that God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Tunaona kwamba Yesu aliahidi kwamba sisi ni wenye dhambi lakini Kristo alikufa wakati ambapo tulikuwa kwa tumdhari wenye dhambi. Now you can believe he loves us. Na sasa wewe unaweza kuamini. You believe Jesus loves us. Na unaweza kuamini sasa Yesu anakupenda. Bible says here in his love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Anasema kwamba sisi sio hatukumpenda Kristo bali ni yeye alitupenda kwanza ndiye akamtuma mwanawe kuja kufa kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu. We love him because he first loved us. Tunaona kwamba tunampenda Yesu kwa sababu kwanza yeye alitupenda sisi. Tunaona kwamba alijinyenyekeza na akatoa maisha yake kwa ajili yetu. That cross shows proof that he loved us. Tunaona kwamba huo msalaba unaonyesha dhahiri ya unabainisha ukweli ya kwamba alitupenda. He loved us before while we were sinners. Alitupenda kwanza kabla wakati ambapo tulikuwa wenye dhambi. But not until he died on the cross did he really prove it. Na alipokufa msalabani ndio ikabainika wazi. Now, after the promise comes the provision. Okay, baada ya ahadi inakuja uh, jambo la ukweli la kuzalisha Jesus Christ is a great husband. Na tunaona kwamba Yesu Kristo ni bwana aliye kwa ukweli. Because he gives you a lot of provision. <coughs> Na yeye anazalisha kweli kweli. You're a king and a priest. Wewe wewe ni wewe ni mfalme. The Bible says that you're now an ambassador for Jesus Christ. The Bible says you're forgiven. You have eternal life. You have a home in heaven. All that free of charge. Because you're on this side. Isn't, isn't God good? 
Na kweli kwa kweli si Mungu ni mwema. And ask you, Lord, that uh, as we uh, take a short break, Lord, that we uh, seal it in our hearts and we understand that it's what you did for us that makes the difference. Not what we do for you, but what you did for us. And Lord, we're thankful for your provision 2,000 years ago on Calvary. Lord, we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Asante sana kwa 